Hi, I'm Beth Graves, and thank you for joining us on the Circus Arts Spotlight. Each week, we'll shine the spotlight on the people, programs, and events of the Circus Arts Conservatory. In addition to professional and student youth performances, we'll explore incredible outreach programs and learn how the circus arts impact so many aspects of life. For more information on today's topic, or anything circus arts related, please go to our website, circusarts.org. Now, let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Circus Arts Spotlight. Today, we're going to speak with Marsha Carlson Pack. We've spoken with Marsha before, and she was so interesting and had so much to say, we decided we had to interview her again. So Marsha loves all things Circus Arts Conservatory, and she's been volunteering with us for many years, even recruiting her daughters, who worked with us for a few years as well. Every February, when the big tap goes up, Marsha takes over running the volunteer ushers as a well-oiled machine. The performers depend on her local knowledge, and our guest ringmasters depend on her for her guidance. So Marsha, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, um, as I said, you are in charge of the volunteer force. Can you tell us what it takes to be an usher at a Circus Sarasota show? Yes. Well, actually, I'm in charge of the volunteer force on site. I do have people in administration who help me um, arrange the volunteers with that. But what it takes for the ushers, yes. The ushers, they're, they're just passionate volunteers. All right, they share our Circus Arts Conservatory vision, and they want to do their very best to share the world of circus and preserve the legacy with Sarasota. Many of our ushers um, have such high regard and respect Dolly and Pedro. That's why they volunteer. Others just love the circus and uh, love to be part of the fun. We have a lot of fun. It is a responsible job, but we have a lot of fun, too. And to usher at Circus Sarasota, I just ask the volunteers to have a positive, willing spirit, um, be in reasonably good health, of course, because there's walking and standing, and have a desire to share the experience with every patron. That's pretty much it. Anybody can do it. <laughs> yeah, and with you leading them, it really, really helps because, like I said, you're such a professional when it comes to uh, the big tap. So, or, or Marsha's big oh, tap. Oh, we well, like thank you. <laughs> so um yes i have been i have been called the big top boss a time or two i say that lovingly yeah. and affectionately of course <laughs> so um do you you have um been obviously to a lot of other places what makes ushering at a circus sarasota performance different from other venues or different types of shows well <laughs> The circus tent is basically a theater. Okay, so in, in many ways, we are similar to other venues. Probably the big, biggest difference that I have seen, my personal experience, emphasis we place on security and safety. Right? We take the safety of everyone, our public, our performers, our staff, very, very seriously. And handling security in a soft-sided tent has challenges which we don't normally experience in a walled building. We have outstanding training and networking to ensure that everything runs smoothly and all of our guests and performers alike enjoy a top-notch experience. So I guess differing, um, that that's probably the main difference and our, our main thrust because circus is, after all, live performance and a theater, theater in the round. Right. I do remember there was one show yes. where um, I think it was during intermission – uh, some sort of net was put up and you had to work the rigging around some of the, um, the patrons. Yes. Yes. That's, that's a, yes, I do. And that was for a trapeze <laughs> act that we opened the second half with. Yes. So uh, during intermission, we did raise that net for the trapeze artists and it was anchored in the stands so I would have to then place, once once it was rigged, we had cables and so forth going on and the net to catch the trapeze performers should they fall. Or when they exited the trapeze, you know, they come down in a big fanfare for their bows. Um, once that was rigged, we did have cables into the seating area of the tent. Um, and not just for trapeze, sometimes the high wire is rigged that way as well. Well, that being the case, as house management, we would need to place P3 
people in strategic locations to assist patrons if they needed to walk over those cables, to make them aware that there are cables there so that nobody trips, nobody falls, everyone is safe. And we did that with the Trapeze Act in, I guess, 2018, 39 consecutive shows, no problem. And in 2019, we did have the Wire Act that also required cables into the seating area. Again, 39 consecutive shows, no problem. So it's just a way of responsibility. It is. It is. And we don't take it lightly. I am constantly watching as house management. That's my job. I, um, I We employ a house manager and I'm kind of over that house manager. I train them. And it's our job and the job of the volunteers is to watch the public, assist the public with anything they may need, watch for obstacles, um, if anyone's feeling ill or something like that. We have um, EMTs at every performance, one in each tunnel. The tunnel is the entry, the, the ingress and egress in and out of the tent. So we do have EMTs stationed with us and we have every available um, emergency um, you know, protocol in place so that everyone's safe. If we have someone feeling ill or whatever, and I've had just about everything happen out there. So um, yeah, <laughs> it's just awareness again. <laughs> yeah. So what are uh, some of your favorite aspects about working for the Circus Arts Conservatory? Well, and I can tell you, I think hands down by far, it's working with the most dedicated, capable and positive team I could ever imagine. Um, Pedro sets the stage. His, his focus during performance is directly opposite to his fun-loving social side. People would never think he cracks a smile when he's in performance. He is so focused he can see a toothpick fall from the top row. Um, so Pedro sets the stage for excellence and for all of us. Um, another thing that really impresses me is he would never ask anyone to do anything that he himself wouldn't do. In backstage, right before curtain call with Pedro in a tuxedo, Joe Bauer, our ringmaster, in all his splendor, shoveling um, a big pile of steaming horse manure because the horse is waiting yeah. to go on, just, you know, had to go. So working in collaboration with all of them and, of course, our executive vice president, Jennifer Mitchell, she has been one of my absolute del delights and continues to be an inspiration. She brings such a positive, no-nonsense approach to the Circus Arts Conservatory. It just, I don't know, drips an attitude of vision and capability. I mean, but I can tell you nothing rivals that feeling I get every time I walk into the big top. I always arrive early. And just so I can sit there, the, the sights, the sounds, the smells, and watch the circus tent come alive because there definitely is a heartbeat to it with every performance. So, yeah. You're right. I've never really thought about it like that. But I, I also like to watch it come alive. I actually love to watch it go up. You know, when you're um, driving on yeah. the highway and they, they start setting the tent up, there's just a sense of excitement uh -huh. in that. Is, yes, you know, and I'm out there all wonderful. the time with my phone every day watching the progress <laughs> and uh, <laughs> taking some pictures, and I tend to post some on Facebook and just, I take pictures of different things. Most people come in and photograph the performances. I love to take pictures of my volunteers of different aspects of the tent being raised, um, being struck at the end of a performance when they strike the tent. There's something special. Um, just some of the views of box office and different things that go on within that heartbeat to make that performance go. Right. So, yeah, very special. Like when they're having a, mm -hmm. when there's some of the horse acts, they have the most amazing stables that are um, portable. And when they put those up yeah. behind the scenes, that also is just yeah. an incredible sight to see that just brings a smile to your face. Yes, so, and um, that's the kind of thing I like to photograph too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that is one of my favorite uh, circus memories is that particular stable being in the back lot. What are some of your favorite circus memories? Well, I suppose my favorite of all time, topping the list totally, was July of 2017 when I was contracted as the house manager and team lead for the 50th anniversary 
Circus on the Move for the Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C. I mean, our big top, my house, was displayed on the National Mall as the center stage. And we as a country came together and celebrated the circus arts. We had performers from all over the country and the world, actually. Um, Nothing really compared to the thrill of displaying that big top in the nation's capital and representing the United States as we showcase circus to the world. Um, Especially important to me that that summer was to have my daughter along as part of my big top management team. So that was very special. Uh, The other part about that, I was honored to be there because that was the farewell tour of Dolly Jacobs and her performance partner, Rafael Palacios. That was the last time they actually performed in public. So I don't think I could talk that summer no matter what I did, but yes, um, <laughs> the horses backstage. I mean, every, every show you get to know the performers, you get to know their special needs or what, what really um, lights them up. And that's always a special time. Every year I say, oh, this performance, nobody can top this one. This was the best performance yet. And then the next year rolls around and I say the same thing. Yeah. (laughs) Very special memories. Yes. Yes, definitely. um, Definitely. I happen to know that you are a world traveler. And I'm wondering, when you travel, if you ever include anything circus related in your travels. Well, I actually do. Um, Whenever, if I'm traveling and there's a circus in town, of course, I have to go see it. I have to check it out. I've seen a wide variety of circuses and performances, both open air performances under a big top, in an arena, uh, you name it. I do keep in touch with many performers via social media, and I'm very blessed to have taken classes with a couple of them. And I've even had my granddaughters train with some of them. Um, In fact, just right after the show ended this year, I I was out visiting with some of them and had my granddaughters training uh, Roman riding, so on the horses. So I do hope to uh, attend Monte Carlo, the circus festival in Monte Carlo one year. And um, I've actually had some of my circus family stay with me in my house. And I certainly hope to travel abroad to Europe, I do have a little list of people expecting me, hoping to see me and welcoming me there. So I'm really hoping I can take advantage of that and and go abroad again and visit. That is so exciting. Yeah, Yeah, well, I've also, oh, the Pellegrini brothers are on my list. I mean, of course, (laughs) of course. The the Kolev sisters, definitely. well, and even even just around this country, I have been blessed with being able to see some of the retired performance performers, um, some who now are, oh, they're responsible for sanctuaries or this or that. I've been privileged to visit people's farms and see them train in their, you know, their their own places and what goes into that. Um, I've watched the next generation. I have some very dear friends who are Risley performers and I've watched them training their next generation and, uh, watching them just, I mean, put rigging up in trees and training in their backyard. Really, really fun. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, just incredible. Yeah. So Marsha, why are you so passionate about the circus? Well, I was thinking about this. I, I'm I'm passionate about circus for many reasons, but if I have to just kind of sum it up, I see circus as a true representative of life. It's truly life. Circus is a family. It's it's a way of life. It's a decision. It's a community. Um, circus members all over. We we embrace each other's differences. We respect and celebrate our different cultures, our origins, countries, religions. We come together under the circus tent and revere both our individualism and the ways we're similar, similarities, without any judgment. I mean, that's the way I choose to live my life, and it's really a privilege to be part of such a global community that that does this. You know, that's, I mean, in today's world, I feel it's important. 
So I like I tell all my high school volunteers that I believe and I made this up, but I do believe it. I believe the term embrace our differences was coined in a circus tent. Because think about it. Do we want to see the same? 